in 2022, Denmark passed France as the world's most taxed country. Taxation accounts to an incredible 46.3% of the GDP here in Denmark and pretty much everything is taxed. But believe it or not, I have found six things that are not taxed, like really. Just as a spoiler alert, there's almost always a catch. So I mean, it's Denmark after all, but these are legit cases. What I did is that I asked one of the most active Danish subreddits and all together we found these unlikely tax exceptions. If you're new here, my name is Mario and in this channel I help experts in Denmark and some things as well on investing, finances and making the most of their life in Scandinavia. The first thing that is not taxed is the sale of owner-occupied flats. In Denmark if you buy a house for let's say or an apartment for 4 million and then you go and sell it for 5 million, that 1 million kroner increase will go straight to your pocket. There's no capital gains tax whatsoever on that 1 million. If you know this is kind of unlikely comparing to a lot of other countries. I think this makes it one more reason again to go and buy a house in Denmark. I think that helps to make it a good deal. It's not an exaggeration also to say that one of the biggest drivers for the net worth of the average team is the value of their homes increasing as well. But, and there are a lot of buts today, this deal only works so long that this is your main home. If you buy a house, put it for rent and then you sell it and all along you have not lived in that house, you will need to pay capital gains on that sale. So instead of, you know, 4 million to 5 million and pocketing that 1 million, you might pocket even half of that. Also note that it's not that Denmark is just so generous and says, let's not tax our fellow citizens and make sure that they're happy and they can grow their net worth. No. So the reason that this setup is like this in Denmark is that when you're a homeowner, you pay two taxes as a homeowner, one on the value of the apartment and one on the land and so on. The reason you're not paying these capital gains is that because you have these two taxes and in theory, they compensate with each other. Two is the private sale of art and collectibles. The sales of work of arts and collectibles are also not taxed. And that's both when you sell your own stuff, so the things you have produced, and also when you resell what you already have. What is a work of art is defined as by SCAT, original sculptures of any material, paintings and drawings and pastels made as handicrafts, handmade textiles based on an artist's original drawing, ceramic products as well, and mosaics of wood, photos sign the number up to 30 copies only. There are also a few caveats. So if you're an artist and sell your work for over 300,000 Danish krona in one year, then you need to pay an artist VAT, meaning an artist sales tax on those sales. And this would be 5% though versus the usual 25% that applies to almost everything. If you're selling works of art that you have bought, so meaning you have not produced yourself but you bought, if you resell these things, again, you're not taxed so long you didn't buy these works of art as a speculation. So if you're a pro art flipper, meaning you buy and cheap and you want to sell more expensive and you do that as your living, then yes, you will get taxed. And I hear that it's up to SCAT to decide whether you bought to speculate or you, you didn't. As for NFTs, like the whole scene is pretty new and I can see that the rules are not entirely clear. I mean, I have been again rolling through Reddit and I couldn't ex find exactly what is the final rules and people say it just call SCAT, right? But what I have seen so far is that they will be treated as work of art. For example, as I told you, you are the person who created these NFTs and wants to sell them and like was your original work of art, you know, you will not get taxed. And also if you bought one, not for speculation purposes or for the love of the art, and then you sell it, I know that's also not going to be taxed. But if you bought to flip, and I would expect that for most NFTs, you will be considered by SCAT that you bought to flip, then yes, you will get taxed. Free is newspapers. So when you buy a newspaper, you don't need to pay this 25% VAT or sales tax. So the sales tax for newspaper, both the paper and the digital versions is 0%. Again, applying for both the paper and digital version. What is considered a newspaper for taxation purposes is also narrowly defined by SCAT. Specifically, what they say is that the publication must be about current news. So it can be a history magazine or a car magazine about the you know, vintage cars. And it has to be talking about up-to-date news and current events. And also the publication must address to a wide range of readers and cover a wide range of topics. Can be, for example, a newspaper that just talks about news about, I don't know, dinosaur enthusiasts, you know, things only about dinosaurs. Even if it's about current news, they would not be considered a newspaper. Four is medical services. So hospital treatments and medical services, including chiropractic, physiotherapy, healthcare and dental services are also exempted from this 25% BA. Like the newspapers, the sales tax on this will be 0%. In addition to all this normal medical treatments, you could also have some of the alternative therapists or other healthcare professionals also provide you services with a BAT exception. Again, it has to be meeting certain conditions and it's not that every single person that says they're a medical profession can get exempted, but in some cases it can be. And again, like in all cases here, SCAT has very clear specific guidelines on what is considered an exception and not. Something that is nice to me here is that when you get a massage in Denmark, you don't need to then pay the sales tax. And that's nice because considering how expensive massages are 
here, which are like top of the world, like insanely expensive. They could still be a lot more expensive if you consider that the masseuses then need to add this 25% BAT on top of it. With the newspapers and the medical services, you are pretty much covering almost everything that is BAT or sales tax exempted. So there are a few more things. So like charity and non-profit events and sales for these events membership fees for some associations and a very narrow set of education initiative and courses but then pretty much everything else is taxed with the BAT. This is very unlikely as you have a lot of other countries even here in Scandinavia as well, take a Norway, right? That at least they have a lower BAT rate for, for example, groceries. Instead of having 25%, maybe they pay 15% or 10%. And that happens to be the case in almost every other country, but not in Denmark. In Denmark, this 25% applies across the board to, again, as you can see, almost everything. Beyond these exceptions, everything else is taxed 25% on sale. Five are scholarship funds and endowments. So now we have gone through capital gains exceptions and we have gone through sales tax exemptions. Now there are also some income tax exceptions, which again, many limitations and caveats. So scholarships for expenses, or for example, for study trips or to cover a specific scientific work are most often tax free for the recipient of that scholarship. However, this tax exception is conditional on the grant being used only for the purpose that it was meant to be. So that means that this income tax exception will cease if the grant is, for example, only partially used, then if you are still, for example, receiving this money, but you have completed your scientific pursuit, then you'll be taxed on the income on this, the rest of the scholarship. Then there are certain scholarships that give you money for traveling and covering your expenses in terms of accommodation, food, and small necessities. This will also be income tax free, but also up to a point. So you can't exceed as of 2022, 539 kronas per day on food and small necessities and 231 kronas per day on accommodation. Six are Airbnb and summer house rentals. So if you rent your home or your summer house for a short period, you can do so without paying income taxes. But like everything we have seen today, there is gonna be exceptions. And I said this, this is only for short term rentals. Long term rentals will always pay taxes. So when you rent your own personal home, and we are looking for example into Airbnb here more specifically, right? You can rent your home and get tax free from Airbnb the first 30,300 krona per year. Everything that you earn on Airbnb on top of you know, this number will be taxed as income taxes. That was again for your main home. When it comes to summer houses, there are different rules. The tax amount here of what you can earn tax-free before starting to pay income taxes, it's 43,200. And so as you can see, it's a bit higher than normal. This is only if you use a rental company and not do it yourself ad hoc. You can of course rent your summer house ad hoc and do it yourself without going for a company. How much you can do and earn without paying taxes is lower. And friends, this is pretty much everything I could find. So if you know anything else that is tax free here in Denmark, leave it in the comments. Next up, you should check this video over here where I go through a deep dive and get ultra specific on the cost of living in Copenhagen. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again next week.